Hello, and welcome to the Kane Forensics video series. In this video, we will look at using the DB browser to analyze SQLite databases. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can earn my get out of jail free card. DB browser for SQLite allows users to create, search, and edit databases using a graphical user interface. For this video, we will focus on using DB Browser to analyze databases commonly found in Android and iPhones and also web browser artifacts. Let's go ahead and launch DB Browser from the menu and then Forensic Tools and then under that Database. And then we are going to open a database to demonstrate. We're going to open one called external.db. Normally, you should open the database in read-only mode, so to avoid making any changes. In this demo, I will be using some features that will not work in the read-only mode. The four functional tabs of the applications are Database Structure tab. This tells you about the tables in your database and the columns in each table, and the data type, such as text for a, a string type, integer for a numeric type, or date time for the date and time types. You will also see other constructs such as the indexes, the view, and the trigger. Next tab is the Browse Data tab. This is the bulk of what we're going to cover today, and we'll come back to this. The third tab is the Edit Pragmas tab, and this is where the advanced options are, which will be covered in a future video. And lastly, we have the Execute SQL tab, and this is where it allows you to type in actual SQL queries and get results. Let's go ahead and click on to the Data Browsing tab. And then we're going to select a table named Files to use as an example. A few things to notice starting from the bottom left. This section tells you the number of entries in that table. In this case, we see 3,613 entries. You can use the arrows to page through the entries, or just straight to the bottom or to the top. On the bottom right-hand side, you'll see the Go To box. Here you can type the entry number and it will jump to that line. Keep in mind that this is the line number of the database as you view it. So if you sort by another column, the go to number will be for that view. We can sort a column by clicking on it. And then if you click on it again, you can do a reverse sort. And if you control click, on a different column, it will give you that column as the secondary sort. And you can tell that it's a secondary sort by a small number 2 next to the column name. And you can actually have up to three sort keys, so if you control click on a third column, that will be your third sort key. You can resize the column width by dragging the column's edge. If you double click on the edge, it will auto fill to the width of the longest text. If you right click on a column header, it will give you a sub menu with more column options. You can hide the columns, show all columns, select columns, and so forth. Sometimes the raw data in a database is not really meaningful to humans and need to be converted to a human friendly format. Now I'm going to Right click on the column header named Date Added and then select the Edit Display Format. For this example, I know from experience that a 10 digit date that starts with 15 is usually a Unix format date stamp. So I'm going to select the Unix Epoch to Date and then now we can read it as a human readable date and time format. Then I'm going to do the same thing and right click on the column header for the date modified column and choose Edit Display Format. Then Unix Epoch to Date and we see that this column is now human readable as well. 
just underneath the column header is a row that says filter in each box. Here is where you can filter down the data based on filters you select. Let's say that you are only interested in MP4 files. So we can go to the MIME type filter box and type in MP4. The filter will be active while you are typing so you don't need to hit the return key. Now let's say that we want to add another filter to only find MP4s which were added after 2018 December 25th. We can type greater than 2018-12-25 in the date added box and we're only left with one result. Let's clear the filters and try something else. You can either click on the X's individually or click on the filter with the red X icon. By default, the filters for text is case insensitive. Let's type in Android in the filter box for the column named title. We see that this returns 66 results including words are lower cased Android. But you can change it in the Edit Pragmas tab and check the box for case sensitive like. You have to make sure that database is not read only, otherwise you can't edit pragmas. Now we go back and see the results are down to two, and they're both with a capitalized A for Android. Let's clear that. Now let's take a look at using wildcards and filters. Let's say we're only interested in logs from WhatsApp. We type in the word WhatsApp into the title filter, and we see 59 results. Most of them are not what we want because we only want the log files. Now, let's add the percent character and then the words log. This now filters down to the eight results that we are interested in. It starts with the word WhatsApp and then ends in the word log. That's why we're able to use the wildcard percent in the middle. Lastly, let's explore the use of regular expressions and filters. If we type the word IMG into the title filter, we see 37 results. Again, most of them are not what we want because we're only interested in the files that start with IMG underscore followed by eight digits and then another underscore and then six digits. We can use the symbols slash slash to enclose the regular expression that we want to be evaluated. So I'm going to type in slash IMG underscore backslash D braces eight end braces underscore backslash D open braces six close braces dollar sign and slash. Now it only leaves 10 rows of data which complies with our format of IMG underscore eight digits underscore six digits. So in the regular expressions, the slash D is for a digit, and then the braces after it with a number tells you how many digits to expect. And lastly, the dollar sign at the end means that the end of the line, so we don't want any data after those last uh, trailing six digits. Next, let's look at conditional formatting. This feature can be used if you want to draw special attention to certain fields. For example, if you want to highlight within the overall table all of the entries added before 2018 October 12th. What we can do is right click into the filter field for the date added column and then select the edit conditional formats in the menu. In the pop-up panel, let's click on add and a new format shows up. Let's change the background to green, click on the bold, and then in the uh, condition box, we're going to add less than 2018-10-12. When we hit done, we see that the fields and desired dates are bolded and have a green background. Let's add a second condition. So I'm going to right click on the filter box and then edit conditional formats. 
and add again. This time I'm going to change the colors to a yellow background and italicize and then add to condition of 2018-10-11. And then once we hit done, we can see that on this second column, now we have uh, fields are highlighted yellow color. Now let's click on the Execute SQL tab. Here, you can actually type in SQL code and then execute it on the loaded database to obtain results. So the simplest SQL query you can do is select star from files. Okay, for the SQL, you must always have a select statement and a from. Everything else is optional. And if you hit control return, it will go ahead and execute it. And we see on the bottom here, we see the results that says we have 3,613 rows returned. Right, so this is basically the entire table. Now let's narrow down the search and only look at tables that we care about. So instead of doing the select star, from files, we're going to change the star into specific columns. So I'm going to put in underscore ID, comma underscore data, comma date added, comma date modified, comma mime type, comma title. If you hit control enter, you can see that it's updated the results and we only see those specific fields that we selected. Now I'm going to add essentially a filter to filter the information. So I'm going to add the where statement, and then mime type, and then the keyword like, and then I'm going to put in quotes, percent, mp4, percent, end quote, and then hit control enter. So this is only going to return any rows that have the words MP4 within the MIME type column. And so this is only going to come back with 35 rows returned. And we can see that they're all MP4s, or the word MP4 is contained in all of these under the MIME type column. We can further change the uh, results by making the date time column human readable. All right, so we're going to use the function date time and then open parentheses and we're going to put in the double quotes the date added column and then we're going to change that into Unix epoch. And then in parentheses, we're going to do the same thing with the date modified column. We're going to do the date time open parentheses double quote, date modified, and then Unix epoch. And once you hit return, you see those fields come back, but unfortunately it also changed the column name. So what we can do is go back and modify it and add the as statement, and then the name that you want it to be called instead. So we're gonna be doing as date added for the date added time column and then as date modified for the date modified column and just for kicks let's go to the very end here for title and do as and then double quotes random words as we execute this query we can see that those columns are renamed as what we told it to be renamed as one more thing we can do we can actually uh, sort the columns, All right? So that's done by the order by construct. And we're gonna, let's say, order by the date added field. And we're gonna do descending order, so D-E-S-C, as opposed to ascending order, which is A-S-C. And once we hit execute or control enter, we can see now the data is ordered by the date added column. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a look at using the DB browser to analyze an SQLite database. 
This is particularly useful in performing cell phone forensics as the app that you are interested in may not be covered by one of the commercial tools. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. And please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.